My name is Asia Samson, and today on Baptism Overland, do I even need to tell you what's about to happen? The ARB stubby bumper for the Jeep JKU. It was a long process on deciding which bumper to get. And one of the reasons why I hadn't gotten the bumper yet was because I was sorting through all the options that I possibly could find. Because it affects the look of the Jeep and everything, you kind of want to take your time and make sure you get the bumper that you really, really want. I mean, there's tons that are cheaper. There are tons that are more cost effective, but there's also some that might rust easier. There are some that, you know, are just there for looks and won't really provide you with anything. This, however, is a beast of a bumper. I mean, just the build alone. And I'm going to go over some of the specs and why I decided to choose it. So first off, this bumper is heavy. It's a stubby bumper and yet already it's heavy. It is about 66 pounds and that's without a winch. If the forms are correct, then the stock Jeep front bumper is right around 30 pounds. So you're adding about another 36 pounds just for the bumper alone. Then figure in a winch. I mean, synthetic or cable doesn't matter. You're going to get the winch is going to be heavy. So you're adding all of that to the front. When the UPS guy was dropping this off today, I actually had to help him get it off the truck. And as we were carrying it into the garage, he said to me, what the hell is in this thing? And I said, uh, a front bumper. And he said, for the Jeep? I said, yeah. And he said, oh, are you ready to lose some gas mileage? And I looked back at him and I said, I know this and I've already accepted this. This is a heavy bumper. You can see why. I mean, the build on this thing is phenomenal. The welds are amazing. I mean, if you've been following my channel, then you'll already know I'm a big fan of ARB stuff. So there probably wasn't any surprise that I'm going to go with an ARB bumper if I'm trying to do an ARB build on the Jeep. However, I almost did consider other brands just for cost purposes. But I mean, at the end of the day, somebody said to me, you know, buy once, cry once. If I would have bought something else and not been happy, then I would have just been kicking myself. So you know what? Let's just go with the ARB and let's call it a day. Another key factor of why I wanted ARB was because, I mean, look at this bull bar. The thing is, and I'm not hating on you if you have one, okay, because I, to each their own, but I'm not a very big fan of the bumpers with a really thin bull bar in the front. Now, for some people that works, but that's just not my style. For me, I wanted something thick and I wanted something that almost matches the width of the runners that I have on the side of the Jeep where it just has that beefy bar look. Downside of this is that these do not have fog light holes. If you get this bumper, you are going to be giving up your fog lights. Like that's just a given. So I figured I'll probably just get a light bar fog light that goes up here. And then that's what my fog lights will be so that I'll at least have that. But to me, losing the fog lights is not that big of a deal. Speaking of lights, there are some awesome places on this bumper for you to add lights. It actually has a bar at the top. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that right there. You have this area here to be able to mount a light bar. So that's awesome. You'll also see that there are two holes here where you can mount other lights. This kit comes with a bracket that goes over here and then clamps down to here. And so you can mount two lights there as well. So you can do that. And then as far as other features, this is the winch area where you could put the winch. They don't give you like a cover plate because it's just an open concept type of bumper, which is awesome because if you want to mount this first and you haven't yet decided on which winch you're going to get like me, then you can go ahead and mount this already and then later buy the winch and then put it on and you have access to all the mounting areas in here. You don't have to take the bumper off in order for you to mount the winch. Most times when you buy a new bumper and you're going to want to put a winch on it, they tell you, you better go buy the bumper and the winch already at once, mount the winch onto the bumper and then lift the whole thing onto the Jeep because it makes it easier that way. And for the most part, yes, that's true, but you don't have to do that with this. So when I do get a winch, you'll see me install it without having to take the bumper off. 
I hope I'm not eating my words right now. And, uh, you know, you'll see how easy that might be. So that's pretty much all the tech stuff about this thing. I love it. So enough talking from me. I know you want to see it. Let's just go and do it. So here are all the parts that comes with your ARB bumper. It's always just good practice to take everything out of the box, compare it to the parts list that's on your instructions. That way you can make sure everything is here and that you're not missing anything. That way you'll also be able to know what it is that you're looking at rather than trying to fish it out of the bag. And so you'll know which parts has to be installed. The goal right now is to install the light bar mounts. These attach to the bumper and then your off-road lights go onto these. These are attached with M8 bolts along with the washers, the locking washers, and the nuts. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so the light brackets are mounted actually pretty easy. I will give you a piece of advice. Do this one first so that it'll hold it in place, but just don't tighten it. Just hand tighten. Then put this one in. And then when you put this in, go ahead and tighten it because it's all the way in the back and you are going to run into the bolt over here. If you put this on, you're going to have a hard time trying to get your wrench back there. So go ahead and do this one. Tighten that down. Then you can tighten this one. Then you can go ahead and put this one on and tighten that. Same thing on the other side. Do this one first to hold it in place. Then do the furthest one inside the bumper. Tighten that, tighten that, and then go ahead and put this one on and tighten that. And that's the easiest way to put these on. So now we're, uh, we're installing something today. What, on your Jeep? Top lift? It's over there. <laughs> On your Jeep? Oh, sweet! You nice! Nice, man! Uh, I hope you have something to cut the your cans off. But I don't think yeah, we need to do it for this one. Oh, you don't have to put this Not cans? for this one. What cans are you talking about? The uh, airbag. Airbag cans. Airbag cans. You don't have to cut them off. I'd have to come off on mine. Well, the ARBs usually do. I had to. Really? The, the, yeah, the deluxe ones that. you have to. Yeah, my But the, the stubby, it. I don't think you do. Okay, yeah. where's the winch? <laughs> no, but there is none. Oh, oh man! man. <laughs> oh, no. The good thing about this open concept, you can actually put it in, put put it in, in afterwards. After, yeah. yeah, it's awesome. So, oh yeah, dude, that's nice. So I guess first thing is removing the old one. That's easy. Yeah. Jinx, but me coke. We got the whole crew here. We got Chris, got Ron, got the other Chris. Stock is out, and we're gonna just do a real quick test fit of that's ARB. The if that's that's hold the on, on, on. easiest thing on the planet. It's truly. Well, just... it may not go all the way back because this is in the way. Yeah, yeah, dude. No, you don't have to cut them. God they bless. They you don't have to cut nothing. First thing is to remove the vacuum pump, and then we're going to put a bracket that will basically rotate that pump out of the way. Oh, it's like this, right? Pull that is still hitting. Yeah. So you gotta turn it. And that then looks this right. goes, that right? That's correct, yeah. But then they have to go through the bottom up. I've been getting a ton the of same stock bolts? Yeah, because you have to, if we cut them, instead of them going down, they go up. Are you sure those don't go down? No, they go, they, it, go, in, up. they go up, yeah, yeah, they're going up now. So, okay. screw these and in. And then they tell you to shear them at the, the when they're, they're, yeah. at when the they're in. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So there's nothing that goes no, on top of No, there's nothing that goes on the top, because it's, it's the nut is the frame. Right. And it's not going to hold it. Oh, okay, I mean, yeah, there's, hold there's, it. There's, this this needs to go underneath the stock bracket. It Wait, does it, is that what it looks like in the it picture? It has to go underneath. It's Otherwise, the there's nothing that'll hold it. I know. It. That's what I'm saying. But is it showing that in the picture? It is on top, Ron. It is on top. And, and there is a nut. Here. This is the nut. So that goes up through there. 
So it looks like you just put that in and tighten it all the way down, and then the nut goes on top, and then that'll hold, that'll sand it. So ARB's instruction says to go from the bottom up, but they but because of the way this JK is, there is um, this is already attached to it. It's not you don't go down and put a nut on there. So we're just gonna we went to retrofit the bumper to see if it works with it going do down it and if we answer. still have clearance for it and we do so we're just gonna do that we're gonna go from the top here to hold this thing down I mean technically too you could put this plate underneath if you wanted take that front bolt off this is insane these things in order for the bumper to fit properly and you do that with a hammer. At least that's what the instructions say. Yeah. yeah. So let's do it. We good? Yeah, go ahead. Preliminary mounted. Bro, we need a winch. I'm saying that it looks very. You need a winch because it looks. It looks odd. It looks like a large whale shark <laughs> with its mouth open. <laughs> Once everything's on, cover goes on. Kind of finishes the look a little bit. This is for your high lift, which. Go. look what's no longer on the Jeep. New bumper is in, it's looking good, I'm loving how it looks, and you know, the installation was not as hard as I thought it was gonna be. Well, correction, the installation in and of itself is not hard, the steps you have to take, there's not much you have to do, but it is very painstaking. A Lot of little steps, a lot of things you kinda have to do that's hard to do, but in and of itself, the process was pretty simple. It's just that removing the old bumper takes a little bit. Not hard to figure out, but it takes a little bit to get it all off. And having it finally removed, then putting the new one on, there were a couple of little things we had to do there as well, but it was all pretty straightforward. Good news is this, this is the ARB Stubby Bumper. The ARB Stubby Bumper goes on just like any other bumper that you might get aftermarket. 
if you were to get the ARB Deluxe, that's a little bit more involved because the ARB Deluxe bumper, the longer width one, allows you to reuse your airbag crush cans. So you have to cut it out of the bumper and then put it into the new bumper. And those are behind this thing. I mean, I'm not even gonna show you, but back here you would have to cut out the crush cans that are still in this. Do you really need them? I'm not sure. There's a lot of people who, you know, have mixed thoughts about it. But for the most part, if you get any aftermarket bumper anyway, aside from that ARB Deluxe bumper, you're not going to be able to use the crush cans at all. And the ARB bumper is so stout. It's so hardcore beastly that if you were to hit something, you have to hit something really, really hard for that airbag to even deploy anyway. I mean, that's pretty much all that crush can does is so that when it hits it, it takes the impact and it doesn't transfer it to the sensors of your airbag and your airbag blows up on you when all you did was hit something lightly. But if you have a, a stout bumper, like an ARB crazy steel heavy bumper, then you have to hit something pretty hard for that to even penetrate into the sensors of your airbag. So I tried to do everything I could to document the whole process in the video so that you can see the steps that we were taking in each part of this build. But if it kind of got lost on you, I'll give you a quick recap. The first thing you have to do obviously is remove the old bumper. And how that's removed, first you take out the skid plate at the bottom. And that's actually pretty easy. That's just held in by those clips and you just take a pry tool and pop them out and then this thing will come falling. Once that's out of the way, you take off the clips that are holding this top little plate that you see behind the bumper now. You cannot remove this right away though. You can only remove the clips but this will not come off because it's actually inside here and it'll just slide inside. There's no way to jimmy it out of there. You have to remove this bumper first to get this out. But you can slide it from right to left. So once you have the clips off of this, you would slide it to one side, then get inside the bumper and remove the four um, nuts that are holding this bumper onto one side of the frame. Then you slide this over to the other side and then you remove the four nuts that are holding the other side. And then from there, you pull this out just a tiny bit so that you can slide this out of there and that's gone. But before you actually take this whole thing off, right behind where your fog lights were, disconnect your fog lights, don't forget that. And then there are clips that are holding all the wires back here. You need to take off all those clips. And there's a ton of them. Uh, a pry tool would really help. Pry out all the clips and then all the wires will come off and then this will finally slide out of the way. On the new bumper, make sure that if you're gonna utilize those um, light brackets that they give you, Put those on there first because it's easier to get to the to the nuts and bolts that way so put those brackets on and then once that bumper is primed and ready before you do that you need to attach the relocation plate for the vacuum pump it really just relocates it backwards so you turn the vacuum pump the other way and then you put that plate on there you'll see it on the video as well we had a hard time with that in the arb instructions it tells you to screw it from the bottom going up to the hole. Then you're supposed to get a nut, put it in there, and then screw that down. And you use two of your original ones. But the thing is, on this JK, it's not a nut and bolt situation. On the panel that it sits on, the vacuum pump that where it sits on right now, the screws are already in there, so there's no need for a nut to put on there. It just You just bolt it right in. So because of that, you have nothing to hold that bracket in. So you can't really go from the bottom up. Fortunately, we were able to go from top to bottom, screw that in, and that helped tighten that bracket in place. Once that's tight, on the ARB instructions, it says you can you know, cut it off because you're not going to need it. But I'm like, well, I may need it later. I don't know. I just don't want to cut things up that I don't have to. And the bumper fit just fine. It still cleared it, so we didn't have to touch that at all. Also, on the ARB instructions, it says you're supposed to relocate your horn. I guess if it's on the right or on the left side, I don't even need to look at that. So I didn't. I skipped that part of the instructions because on the 2016 JKs, the horn is inside the engine bay. So I don't even know why that's on the ARB instructions. I don't know if some of your guys' years, that's not 2016, the horn is by the bumper. But if it's not, then you, you could skip that part as well. Now, once that vacuum pump has been turned around and relocated further away, Go ahead and put the bumper on just to kind of test fit and see how it's going to look and you'll know how it fits, but don't attach it yet because where you mount it to on the frame 
you have to take a hammer and bend that metal down. Apparently that's how it allows the ARB bumper to sit flush. If not, your ARB bumper is going to kind of be tilted like this. Uh, you don't want that and it's not going to get into the to the bolts properly. So you need to kind of smash that down a little bit. It's not that hard. It'll bend. You just need you know, brute force and you know some kind of humongous hammer and smash that down. Then you're able to put the bumper right on top. Then you put in the bolts and then you're good to go. It's hard to get to those bolts. The ones on the inside are easy. You can access them. But on the side, ARB was saying that we need to use uh, some sort of tool to put that, that bolt in there so we can reach it. I didn't know I needed it. So what we did is we took a wrench, something similar like this. We put the nut in there and then we held it in place with uh, painter's tape. And then we kind of just slid it into that slit and that allowed us to get to the bolt and then screw it in because that's the only way because all you have is that little opening where you normally would put your high lift jack mount uh, where you would put that is where the bolts go in so there's no way to access the bolts from the inside so we used one of these we kind of just jerry rigged our own because we didn't have the actual tool to bring the bolt into that area but it can be done but once you got that locked in it's pretty much the install is done. Now, these instructions does not involve what you would do if you were to get a winch. On the ARB instructions, it does mention what you have to do first. Uh, putting the winch on there, it comes with other brackets. I have a ton of parts back here just for brackets for a winch and for your license plate and things like that that I didn't even need to use. That's back there. But it is in the instructions how you mount the winch on. But that should be a pretty easy thing because once I get a winch, I don't have to remove the bumper because it's pretty open concept. I just drop it in there and I have access to all the areas where you lock your winch down on. And based on my friends, I should get a winch like soon. They kept making fun of me all day today, all day, saying that this bumper, as good as it looks, looks like a whale with its mouth open. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. That's the entire install for this bumper. It's pretty easy to do. Now, did it really need to take four guys to install one bumper? Probably not. Probably only two of us. It would have been fine. But anytime you get a group of friends together, even for a simple build like this, it's always a good time. And I love hanging out with the guys and just hanging out in the garage and putting stuff like this together and taking turns and things like that. Yeah, it's a little overkill for one bumper, but I had a great time today. That being said, in the B-roll video, you probably saw all these new lights that are on the Jeep. No, I did not skip a step. I just didn't want to include that install with this video and make it longer. So in the next video, I'm going to show you the new upgrades I got to my lighting. Stay tuned for that video. Until then, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, pass it amongst your friends, everything. Let's help this thing grow. And also don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Baptism Overland. My name is Asia Sampson and I will see you next time. What am I gonna do with this old bumper? I wonder if my wife will let me hang this in the house somewhere. Use it like as a planter or something. It's like Yosemite Sam. <sighs>